Hi everybody. Today I want to show you a card made with the Lila's Heart stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. This stamp set is very special to me because the Lila image in there is Jennifer McGuire's daughter, Lila, who is quite possibly the most beautiful child on earth. And I was lucky enough to get to meet her last month and she is just as sweet and beautiful as she looks, just like her mom. So I wanted to color this image of this sweet little girl today. Now I wanted to build her into a little scene. And so I'm taking some post-it masking tape. This is like the crafter's duct tape. This stuff is awesome. And I'm masking off what's going to be the ground, basically. So I wanted a nice straight horizon line. And to do that, I just lined the post-it tape up on my grid paper, which really helps because I am terrible at determining horizontal lines. <laughs> That's why I have a misty. I cannot do that by myself. So having the grid paper really helps. Then to create sort of a wall behind the image in contrast with the ground, I'm just taking a sponge dauber and some crumb cake ink. And I wanted an irregular look to the wall. I really wanted it to look like she was outside standing in front of a wall. And so that's why I chose a sponge dauber instead of an ink blender, because I wanted a little bit of texture and variation. And I made sure and made the ink a little bit darker where it meets the ground. Just for, I don't know, a little shadow, a little bit of realism. So now I have a little backdrop to put her on. And I just want to sort of figure out where she's going to go. I'm going to use this sweet image. I just love it. And her hair looks just like her hair does in real life. She has little ringlets like an angel. She's so cute. So again, lining up my horizontal on the grid paper will help me make her not look like she's falling down. And I can just make her good and perpendicular to that horizontal horizon line. And I want to make sure that I'm leaving her enough room for a little heart-shaped balloon. Since she won't be all the way at the bottom of the card, I need to make sure that the string of the balloon and the balloon itself will fit. And for some reason, I keep putting the balloon string on there upside down. Not sure what that's about. But now I can sort of determine the angle and the placement of the balloon and figure out sort of where I want to stamp her. And what's cool about this is it really, I can make the balloon sort of float off in any direction. But I do want to make sure I know where her little feet are going to be. So now I just pick her up with my clear block. Now the great thing about using a water-based ink, like I used crumb cake ink from Stampin' Up! for the background, is that when I'm doing the watercolor, it doesn't really matter where I've stamped my image over that background because that ink will move around with my watercolor and just vanish into the painting that I'm going to be doing. So I don't have to worry about that line or anything. It'll all work out. And you'll see because I'm stamping her dress across that, that line where the ground meets the wall behind her. Now I'm using Smoky Slate ink because I'm going to be doing no line coloring. And I want that line to, to all but disappear. I'll have a little bit of definition when I'm done. But the gray, the pale gray, really helps me make it a softer look. I knew that I wanted kind of a soft brown and some teal in this image and so the gray really doesn't interfere with any of that it just gives me enough definition to be able to paint with. So I'm going to speed up my watercoloring a little bit. Her dress is the, the peacock blue color from the Fine Tech watercolor set. That's my name, not their name by the way. You know how I like to name my own colors, I don't really care what other people call them. 
but I'm also using sort of an olive brown for the shading. I wanted to mimic the color in the background for the shadows because cast shadows usually do pick up the colors of the environment. And so I was trying to put a little bit of realism in there. Now Fine Tech has a beautiful flesh tone watercolor. And so I'm using that for her body and for her face. And I'm adding just a tiny bit of a blush color just with their one of their more crimson reds to give her just a little spot on her cheek and then some some pink on her legs since it is spring she's probably running around outside and then I wanted to add some darker shading where there might be a shadow from her dress onto her legs so I'm adding some more intense peacock blue again for shadows these layer and blend so beautifully once you have them down it's really hard to make a mistake and I'm going to do several layers for her hair. I'm starting with sort of a straw color, which is a beautiful kind of honey blonde. And then I'm going to highlight, I love the lines in this stamp image that make her ringlets. And so I'm going to come back and add some definition to those. And as you can see, I'm kind of a fidgety painter. I'll do a little bit of her face, a little bit of her dress, and go back and forth from one part of the image to another. I don't stay on any one thing too long. That's my creative ADD. I think what happens is as my eyes move around the image when I'm coloring things, I say, oh, I don't have enough shadow on her legs. Oh, I don't have enough shadow on the bottom corner of her dress. And then I remember what I'm doing and I go back to her hair. <laughs> so I'm sure this happens to all of you as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of definition back to her beautiful little curls give her a little contrast with both the background wall since that has a little bit of brown in it and then that nice pink color on her cheek. So that's the basic watercoloring job for her. I have a few things that I need to touch up but I'm going to go ahead and get started with the balloon. And again, you'll see me turning this upside down the wrong way about 50 times. I really don't know what it is about my brain that keeps putting the string upside down. But it'll be quite obvious to you when you see the stamps <laughs> which way it goes, especially now that you've seen me do it the wrong way about 25,000 times. And then the little heart just sits on top of this. As an 80s girl, this... Reminds me of Nina. Remember that song, the 99 Luft Balloons? It's hard for me to color a balloon anything other than red after, after MTV. You know how that is. So now I need to make a little mask for her hand so that this string of the balloon looks like it's coming out of her hand. So I took just another little scrap of that post-it tape. And I need to cut it out, which is endlessly fascinating. So I'll remove some of that process from the video. And basically, I'm just masking her hand. But a lot of times when I cut a mask, I like to do just a little bit extra. And that's in case I make a mistake and get ink somewhere I shouldn't get it. I don't want to ruin this image that I spent so much time coloring. And always cut inside the lines just a little bit on your stamp images so you don't leave a halo. And then I will ink up this stamp again in the same Smoky Slate ink. It'll just help me keep it consistent. And the string of the balloon is really the only thing that's not going to get colored. And so it's nice that it blends in with the lines, the stamp lines that you can still see on her. And the stamp line that you'll be able to see just a little bit of around the heart. What's nice about gray is it really ends up just looking like shading or a shadow when you're doing no line coloring and it really doesn't interfere at all with your painting. I'm going to stamp this on top and it's nice because the top of that string, the little bottom of the balloon fits perfectly kind of behind the string right there so it looks great. 
great design. And now I'm going to take the mask off and start to color this little heart. She looked funny. She looked like a little ghost with that thing on, so I wanted to take that off. Now whenever I color with red, I usually actually start with an orange. I like that sort of warm highlight that it gives a red image, and then I'll usually go around the edges with red. I also do this with yellows too. I think those both make natural, nice highlights that aren't monochromatic on a red image like a transparent balloon. And then I can just go around and I kind of avoid the area that I know will be closer to the eye, basically. And then I go back and, and blend those out. But that way, if I leave them light while I'm, I'm coloring the edges and feather them out later, it will still give the illusion of dimension on the balloon because I've just left that unpainted for most of the time. I'm using all the reds, really, in the set to do this. They shade so beautifully together. And I'm adding a little bit of water to the Lila image and blotting it with my disposable washcloth just to lighten her face just a little bit. I noticed that it was a little dark. And now I'm adding that more chestnut brown to her hair to bring back her curls and give her some contrast so her beautiful hair doesn't fade into the background. Then I get the entire washcloth wet and dab her hair just to erase some of the definition from those lines, but I'll still leave a lot of that detail there. Now I'm trying to figure out a shadow, and I eventually decide that the shadow, I was going to put it on the wall behind her, but I didn't want to mess with that hair detail because I kind of liked it at the end. So I ended up deciding that the shadow should fall behind her, and I just used the stamp image to kind of figure out an angle and really where I want that image to be. Since there's not much room really under her feet, I don't get the shape of the stamp image so much as I do just the angle of her legs kind of going out behind her as if the light were coming from the front. And then I just make the shadow in gray. And there she is, sweet finished little Lila. And now that I've spent all this time, the last thing that I want to do is mess it up with a crooked greeting. So I'm getting out my Misty. And you can see my little trick for making sure that my magnets don't get stuck together. I put one on the bottom of my fingers and one on the top until I'm ready to move them apart. And then I can't lose them and they won't get stuck together. So now I'm going to line up the image. This really has, it's always been one of my challenges <laughs> as a stamper, and I'm so glad I have the Misty to compensate for my little stamping disability. So what I like to do is put this stamp image down on what I think is straight, which really never is, pick it up with the lid of the Misty, and then use the grid lines on the lid to correct my error, which is usually about two degrees. <laughs> I'm pretty consistent about stamping crooked. And then I'll close it again and just check and make sure those letters are in a straight line. And they weren't this time. You have to play with it a little bit sometimes. Especially since you're looking through the back of a photopolymer image, you get a little bit of distortion. And so you can just keep playing with this grid until it's perfect, which I love, because if I try to stamp this, oh, I would have been sad after all that time that I spent coloring, and this is, you know, I think that banners and pennants on cards will completely go out of style now, because that's the only reason I ever used them was because I got my sentiment crooked. But now I think I have it straight and I'm ready to ink it up. It's definitely worth taking the time to do this, I think. And I'm using VersaFine black ink. I'm just gonna ink this up. I love these tall, thin letters. They sort of coordinate with the length of this image. It's really sweet. 
And the greeting says, you have the biggest heart. Just adorable. Now I'm noticing that I have kind of a harsh line on her dress. The great thing about these watercolors is they're real forgiving. I can go back and blend that out now, even though the image has been dry for quite some time. And I just want to soften that up. It just struck me right now that that was a little bit harsh. So I can fix that easily. And now I think she's pretty much perfect. So there she is. I ended up going back and adding a little bit of Wink of Stella to the heart and to her hair. But there she is, sweet little Lila. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching.